Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Wi-Fi Now feature interview. My name is Klaus Hetting, and I'm the CEO and chairman of Wi-Fi Now. And today I'm talking to IO by HFCL, a very ambitious and talented newcomer within the world of enterprise and service provider Wi-Fi solutions. So my guest today is Andrew Westerman. Andrew is VP of International Sales at IO by HFCL. Andrew, uh, welcome and great to see you again. Hi there, Klaus. Yeah, great to join you. And, uh, you know, thanks for the opportunity to have the interview with you. Sure, it's a pleasure. So first of all, give us a progress report on IO by HFCL. You're working super hard on market expansions, I know, into EMEA, into the UK, the rest of the world. Can you say something about where you are? Yeah, we, we've had an extremely busy and uh, successful year. We started selling internationally probably in around May. 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, at that point, we we pretty much came from a standing start, and we've we've seen really good growth during the year. Um, we've you know we we've come from being a, a completely unknown brand to a very well known brand, you know, especially within the Wi-Fi space, and uh, it's been a very you know successful and busy year, and we're getting very good traction across the board, and uh, you know I think we're. We're being seen as a very disruptive force um, in the Wi-Fi space, you know, which is obviously very good for us. Excellent result, and it's not easy, by the way, starting from zero. Uh, in in the sense that you've obviously been active uh, elsewhere for a long time in India, specifically, but starting from zero is not easy. And 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 um, part of your strategy is signing up with the right distributors, for example. Uh, so, can you give us an update on that? Because I know there's been uh, a few new items there to speak about. Yeah, you know, like you say, we've been very selective in, in terms of who we are working with. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we've we deliberately tried to partner with the wireless specialist distributors rather than the, the uh, you know, the broadline distributors because, you know, we were coming from a point where, you know, we're an unknown brand. People don't know us and we want to work jointly with our partners to actually establish the brand. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that has gone very well. You know, we're probably at around 12 distributors now um, in the EMEA region. Uh, we've also just added a new distributor for North America, uh, US and Canada, also Mexico. Um, also, we're looking at, we're talking with a partner in Japan now um, and, and also Asia Pacific in general and Latin America. So it's really gone fast. Um, and, um, you know, it's been a very fast start, literally from a, a standing start. Um, yeah, you know, in April last year. So, what do you think is driving this? Obviously, this is uh, you guys with great products and so on, and the right price points and things like that, I guess. But there's there's clearly a need uh, with this many distributors signing on uh, mm. this quickly, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, what we're finding is that the demand for Wi-Fi is huge. You know, everyone wants Wi-Fi, um, particularly Wi-Fi six. You know, that's really the you know the big area where we're seeing growth. I think you know we we've, we've been helped by the fact that there has been a you know a shortage of supply um and and also the you know in terms of the global politics you know with all the issues around China and covid and all those sorts of things actually a lot of companies want to work with a supplier that manufactures elsewhere and and you know as as you've seen in the news you know there seems to be a big transition going on from china based manufacturing and r&d towards mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're really becoming a big beneficiary of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so when you look at your results from this year, uh, can you say anything about how this has impacted the bottom line, so to speak? I, of course, a, uh, a, a daughter company of HFCR, which is a very large Indian fiber equipment, essentially, company, if, I, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and can you say anything about the results? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the HSCL is a very large listed company in India, mm -hmm. you know, turns over hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So in the big picture of the company, you know, we're, we're still a small part, you know, because mm -hmm. we're, we're just getting started. But, you know, we've managed to establish a, a multi-million dollar business with it within a year. Mm -hmm. And the plan for next year is to grow significantly beyond that, you know, and keep going. And mm -hmm. it's still at an early stage, but, you know, we're, we're at the stage where we're going to see hundreds of percent of growth, you know, year on year, because we, you know, we're literally starting from a standing start. 
-hmm. And, you know, the aim is, is that, you know, we're going to be a significant player um, in this space mm -hmm. uh, on a global basis, ultimately. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're taking it step by step, region by region. Um, but it seems to be very well received everywhere we go. Super uh, ambitious and 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 super interesting that you're you're taking on the world essentially with 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 this initiative, right? Um, yeah. I also want to, go ahead, sorry. No, I'm going to say we we are quite a disruptive force. You know, we have yes. um, if you look at the Wi-Fi space right now, you know, we have very good quality products um, because our heritage with, is with the large carriers inside of India. Uh, we have very good pricing because of the economies of scale that we have. And we're also to be are also able to supply very quickly. You know, mm -hmm. our lead times are very short compared to the competition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're in a position where we can literally supply any quantity of access points within six to eight weeks, which is mm -hmm. quite unique right now. Mm -hmm. And you're also very deeply involved in the uh, Open Wi-Fi project by Open Wi-Fi by uh, Telecom Info Project. Yeah, and, exactly. And you know, we're... Mm -hmm. One of our other unique points is that we make available all of our access points in either proprietary Wi-Fi format or open Wi-Fi format. Mm -hmm. And we've seen growth in both areas. And I would say the, you know, the open Wi-Fi format is quite ahead in the United States, but we're seeing that take up now happen in Europe. And many companies, especially in the large enterprise space, mm -hmm. are looking to move down the open Wi-Fi route because they mm -hmm. see the benefits of, you know, that disaggregated architecture, there's no real vendor locking, and there's actually significant savings in terms of CapEx and OpEx. For sure, and Africa, Middle East as well should be areas of interest, right? For, for yeah, absolutely. Area. You know, so we're, we're looking, that's really the next step for us to, mm. to, to expand significantly in Africa and also the Middle East. You know, we have a, a large distributor about to come on board in Africa, and that's hopefully going to be our first step into that market. And, um, you know, we expect to see significant growth there as well because, you know, the, the opportunity and the need is really low-cost internet connectivity uh, mm -hmm. for the people across Africa. And the demand is, is absolutely huge. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have some very large projects under discussion uh, mm -hmm. right now um, in Africa. Exciting times. Uh, can you also say just a few words about your in-home product because this is also something entirely new right that only came out a few months ago i think yeah we're just releasing this product now it's known as our home mesh router our weave product mm -hmm. and it's quite unique it's it's a it's a mesh system it's a home gateway um with meshing wi-fi meshing so you get very good wi-fi 6 coverage across the home but the real unique point of it is that it's managed by the same wi-fi controller as the um, your standard wall plate and ceiling mount APs. Mm -hmm. So as a, an enterprise or service provider, it gives you that fully managed presence you know, in the home or the business, along with great Wi-Fi connectivity. And we're seeing tremendous interest in this. You know, we're, we're just launching it at the moment. Uh, we've got many trials planned, many demonstration units you know, being sent out to customers. Um, and again, we're really hopeful that this is gonna be uh, you know, an extremely successful product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Super cool. So I think we touched on this before, but my last question was actually a little bit about India. And I'm not sure that we can say that in general, it has been a market advantage to say that your uh, your uh, uh, company is Indian in this sense, but it may actually have become a market advantage these days for the number of the reasons that you just mentioned in that uh, because of you know political instability and so forth and disruptions from pandemics and whatnot that... Mm. The supply chain from China has not been as strong as it has been in the past. So now India is the up and coming, uh, perhaps, source yeah. of tech technology, right? Yeah, you know, and it, it say this wasn't a hundred percent clear to me, you know, probably no. a year ago, um, but it's become very clear during the last year that, you know, because of the the COVID disruption, the supply chain issues, the global politics, many companies are actually looking for a product that's not manufactured in China. And, um, you know, the benefit of being an Indian company is we have those, uh, that strong supply chain. We have, let's say, more globally aligned politics. And we have very good products and very good cost base, you know, with disruptive mm -hmm. pricing. Mm -hmm. And when you add all those things together, um, it seems that it's a very attractive proposition for customers. And, and you know, we're, in many cases, we're actually getting companies contacting us now 
because they want a product that's not manufactured in China. Yeah. That's and, amazing. Um, yeah. You know, it's you know, they say that was completely unexpected to me, totally. um, but it's it's something that you know we're we're trying to take full advantage of, obviously. Yes, and and also I think important to mention that your base, your installed base, and your business in India is is very large with. Uh, uh, at least one very large service provider there. So, I mean, this yeah. is the basis that you're growing from, right? Exactly. So, you know, we, we're, we're quite unusual in that the the history of the company and the heritage of the products comes from the very large carriers um, mm. in the Indian uh, mobile market. So we're taking that and we're putting that now into the enterprise market. You know, most other companies at this, you know, startup companies in this space you know, they start in the enterprise space with an ambition to get into the into the carrier market. We're, we're coming at it the other way. And the benefit of that is that, you know, we have very feature rich products. We have the economies of scale and, uh, and very good quality, you know, to go with it, along with disruptive pricing. You're in a fantastic position, Andrew, and I wish you, you guys so much luck uh, and, and uh, um, ahead in, in the next few years. And I'm sure we're going to hear lots more from you. Uh, because you're already super successful, and I think you'll see a lot more of that. That's my opinion. But come back and and get us a, another update soon, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'd love to come back and give you an update, and uh, say pleasure to talk with you. And uh, thanks very much. For the thanks for coming out. Thanks. Perfect. Right. Okay. Thank you, class. Thanks. All right, folks, that's it for this feature interview. Thanks to my guest Andrew Westerman from IO by HFCL. Don't forget that we have four Wi-Fi World Congress events coming up this year, including Rio de Janeiro, that's next month, end of next month, Brighton, UK in May, Toronto, Canada for the first time as well in September, we're excited about that, and Bangkok in Thailand in November. So to receive the latest information on our events and on everything that we do, including, of course, the latest in news and information from right across the web industry, sign up on this website. And uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and goodbye.